Hello and welcome to Autofocus. We are here in Udaipur today to drive a very key addition to Honda's portfolio. For this year, Honda's portfolio is sorely missed an SUV for a while now. After the BRV, they've not had a body style that is anywhere near an SUV. The only three cars that really they have in their portfolio currently are the Honda City EHEV, the City uh, regular petrol version, and of course the Amaze. So now the Elevate is going to be joining that portfolio and it's an SUV from the ground up built broadly from the same platform as the Honda City, but it is a genuine SUV in its stance, in its build, in its footprint. It's a 4.3 meter SUV built with a lot of design cues that range from Honda's vehicles that are currently in the US and it also has a lot of design cues from the CRV, which we've seen on our roads, and a very beloved SUV. So now Honda is finally getting into the game with its own SUV, and it has big plans going forward, including electrification on the same platform as the Elevate. Let's take a look at the Elevate, go in depth, find out what it has to offer, and how it feels like to drive on the roads of Udaipur today. So yes, the Honda Elevate is potentially going to be used for an EV in the future. Sometime in the next three years, you can expect a EV built on the same platform as the Elevate. It's also going to be an SUV that's going to be positioned in the same segment as a lot of the current uh, players like the Hyundai Creta, the Kia Seltos. 4.3 meter long SUV with a nice wide stance, a lot of strength coming in from that high shoulder line and low roof, but it's still a fairly tall SUV and of course, key factors that 220 millimeter ground clearance that's being offered with the Elevate. Let's talk a little more about its design and its performance. So walking up to the new Honda Elevate, immediately you're struck by this design for a 4.3 meter SUV. Honda has chosen to do a bit of the reverse of what uh, the rest of them do. So there's sort of like a power dent in the middle of the bonnet that catches your eye first. These two raised sections on both the left and the right, of course, also sort of enhancing that presence for an SUV that needs that road presence and stance. And of course, this exactly vertical front grille, which is trademark for a lot of Honda SUVs in the US. And that's been brought in with a very unique grille design, a honeycomb, which is dominated by horizontal stripes. It's mildly curved and this chrome band at the top with its bottom black frame captures nicely the front fascia for the Honda Elevate. The front fender of course captures air dam in the middle and Fox kit plate that is peeping out of that bottom front side of the Elevate. Ground clearance is 220 millimeters and so that sort of gives it a largish approach angle, gives it the necessary presence for a SUV that looks like it can even take a bit of the off-roads. Entire front profile captured nicely by this fascia, nice steeply raked windscreen and roof rails for a roof that is about 1600 mm plus for a vehicle that's been derived from the city's platform doesn't quite look like it. It's been extensively worked on for it to deliver that key SUV presence. So the side profile of the Honda Elevate as you can see is dominated by that high shoulder line. Um, Honda officials tell me that the shoulder line has been raised uh, for a good reason. There's been a lot of changes to the chassis in terms of there's been an increase in the use of ultra high strength steel. It's also um, a passenger cell that Honda officials claim has been enhanced in terms of overall safety thanks to that raised shoulder line. Um, the, depending on the trim, of course, you're going to have either a chrome window frame uh, bottom, a chrome door handles, all of that coming through in the top trims, um, lower trims may be different. But overall, that is dominated by that side character line and the shoulder line. It does seem like the overall DLO and the glass area is reduced, but the cabin doesn't feel very dark. It is still fairly well lit. And of course, you do have the option in this particular trim variant of opening the sunroof, which again brings in a lot more light. 17 inch alloys are special. There's been a bit of swapping around with the alloys between this and the city on which it is based. But those 17 inch alloys 
uh, looking pretty distinctive on the Elevate and that then sort of uh, completes the uh, side profile. At the rear, the uh, Honda Elevate gets uh, a sort of a twin LED DRLs which uh, nicely sort of bracket out the uh, width of the Elevate, capturing that width nicely and also giving it a rather squat stance. The LED DRLs combined with the turn indicators and uh, the rest of the light combination do seem to have been in inspired by the CRV. So the Honda Elevate isn't looking very big, but that's very deceptive. I would say it still is a fairly large SUV. Some of the segment leaders, Honda claims that at about 4.3 meters long, 2,650 millimeters is the wheelbase, which is about 2.65 meters. And Honda claims that this is uh, higher than the segment leaders, as is also the ground clearance. Now the Overall impact of the car is best felt from the front, but from the side, though it looks deceptively more compact, it actually is larger. It also has a fairly large 458 liter boot. Something that Honda really manages every time is what they in their own terms call man maximum, machine minimum, which then also translates into a larger cabin, even more usable space than what the external footprint might suggest. That's been achieved in the Elevate. Fit and finish quality is excellent. There are just the one odd places where the panel gaps are a little bigger than I would have liked, but overall paint job, panel gaps, all of them, very shut lines are beautifully tight and overall finish quality is excellent. Uh, what you're seeing of course is a signature blue color, but it also has a pearl white and uh, orange, which also has been done very, very neatly. The design of the Honda Elevate is very appealing. It has got a nice mix of design attributes from Honda models across the globe and it does feel like a premium compact SUV. So we're sitting in the cabin of the Honda Elevate and I can tell you that of course it is going to be trim dependent what you get but this is a very very neatly laid out cabin, very horizontal orientation, very typically Honda where it's clean, neat, almost uh, clinical and at the same time also looking premium and at the same time a little I would say unadventurous in its styling but the dashboard is still looks very plush it's got bits of foxwood here nice stitched uh, fake leather in the uh, IP there's this 10.25 uh, inch screen crowning that center stack and of course a leather stitched steering wheel multifunction digital instrument cluster and the touch screen sort of combining to give it that more modern touch. The seats are extremely comfy, very well constructed. Honda says a lot of attention has gone into ensuring that the lumbar and back support have been perfected for the sake of ensuring long drives are very comfortable. The bolsters themselves are very generous. And of course, what we're sitting in has this leatherette upholstery. And it is a combination of a sort of mild milk chocolate brown and a dark gray theme which works really well for the Elevate. There's matte aluminum accents, there's a wireless charger for the smartphone, a wireless Apple CarPlay, and of course the sunroof that a lot of customers in this segment today expect. It also gets a music system, loads of space, and a very quiet cabin, thanks to a lot of attention that's gone into deadening sound and the NVH performance clearly indicates that they've done a damn good job of that. So with that sound deadening on the firewall, on the floor and a lot of the other potential noise originating places having been, you know, sort of lavished with attention by Honda engineers, the cabin is a really quiet cabin. The 10.25 inch IPS panel on the top of the center stack in the Honda Elevate can be connected using Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both wired and wireless. They're compatible both ways. It also has, in order for a distinction, it also has an optical clear adhesive, something that enables the screen to be non-reflective. Screen also displays a camera output for an assistant side view monitor and a rear view monitor, both of which enables you to see the blind spot in case you do want to take a look at that. The Honda Elevate's 7-inch TFT 
meter digital instrument cluster has a set of interesting displays in addition to the usual drive related stuff. It also shows G meter, an outside temperature indicator, the usual fuel consumption, trip meter, the gauges, and also some Honda sensing information in the event that some of the ADAS functions are active and being engaged. During idle times, it also has a clear, well indicated clock on the large screen. Some of the other features that Honda has given for the Elevate that makes it uh, like an interesting package and delivers a few more advantages for drivers and users uh, include a wireless phone charger, the Honda connected car features using which you can use a set of remote operations. It is also Alexa compatible, also has a walk away door lock. So in case you have the key in your pocket and you walk away, the car locks itself. There is also remote engine start in the, as part of the connected uh, car features and a multi-angle rear view camera and auto headlights which, even, which get engaged even when the wiper is switched on in the eventuality of a heavy downpour. The Honda Elevate gets the same powertrain as in the Honda City. It is uh, a powertrain that's tried and tested. It's a powertrain that Honda has chosen for the Elevate for multiple reasons, including the fact that it is platform that's shared with the city. Four-cylinder, 1,498cc iVTEC DOHC engine is uh, this engine that uses Honda's proprietary iVTEC technology, variable valve timing. It is also an engine that is known to be both peppy and frugal. The engine also delivers the same amount of output as in the Honda series So the tuning in the Elevate is similar to the city. So it does uh, give out 121 PS of peak power and 145 Newton meters of peak torque. This uh, output of course though is identical with the city. Honda engineers tell me that it has been tuned to deliver the power differently compared to in the city. It has been customized for the Elevate's performance and outlook. The ratios are different and of course throttle mapping is different. It still is a fairly frugal engine, delivers rated mileage of 16.9 in the CVT gearbox version and about 15.3 in the manual gearbox version. Of course the gearboxes themselves are also the same as in the Honda City. It is the same 6-speed manual gearbox and CVT automatic gearbox as is featured in the city. The manual gearbox is clean shifting, a nice progressive clutch action and the shifts are crisp and clean with the reverse also falling clean though it is a simple push all the way to the right and shift downwards for a reverse action. The continuously variable transmission, the CVT also is one of the most refined CVTs in this class. It's uh, Honda's CVTs of the past Previous generations were not as refined as the current one. This one has no sort of sense of rubber band effect from the uh, type of shifting that it does in auto mode. Ride quality, of course, is also something that I can say is really well tuned in the Elevate. Ground clearance is one of the factors that sort of gives you a lot of confidence in taking bad roads with the Elevate. In addition, the quality of the ride also has been fine tuned to offer an excellent balance between rigid and uh, pliant ride. Overall, the powertrain and ride quality continues to be one of the best in this segment coming from Honda. In the Honda Elevate, the, the CVT has also been marginally modified and optimized to offer a 4% improvement in efficiency. The top speed though for both the variants of the Honda Elevate has been electronically restricted to 160 km per hour. The Elevate gets Honda's suite of ADAS features, what Honda clubs together under its Honda Sensing brand. So it does get a lane watch, lane keeping assistance, collision mitigation, auto high beam, road departure warning, and adaptive cruise control, including start stop feature in the advanced uh, adaptive cruise control feature. So it also has a lead car departure notification, which essentially warns you in the event that the car comes to a complete stop and the car in front of you or the vehicle in front of you starts moving forward again. It gives you an audible warning before the ADAS feature is re-engaged. In addition, it gets a suite of safety features, including vehicle stability assist, hill start assist, emergency stop signal, a rear parking sensor, and a multi-angle rear view camera, which throws up a very, very usable live video on the infotainment screen, though it does miss a dynamic turn guidelines while trying to park. A light crash performance, which Honda engineers tell me 
is essentially a feature that will allow you to keep driving the car without much uh, damage to the vehicle in the event of a very, very low speed collision. Of course, it does depend on conditions and negative speed in the event of another moving vehicle in front of you. Uh, it also is one of the vehicles in this segment which offers a very good tried and tested pedestrian protection. Six airbags of course including a side curtain airbag and a side airbag and of course ISOFIX child restraints. So that then was the Honda Elevate. We've been driving it through the day today in and around Udaipur. A small section are going uphill in a windy uh, uh, road and of course on the highway leading up to Mount Abu. Uh, the Elevate does shine right through all of those uh, driving conditions. It's very stable on the highway and neat and compact and very easy to maneuver even through tight turns in some of the uh, crowded sections of the hilly road we drove through. Uh, thankfully we did get a very little traffic so it was uh, good fun to experience the Elevate on that section. Now, this is a compact SUV that's going to be squarely pitted against the likes of the Hyundai Creta, the Kia Seltos, the Maruti Vitara Brezza, and quite a few others, the Nexon, of course. Now, this is certainly Honda's best attempt yet at coming through with an SUV that can then take on these existing players who have already entrenched themselves in the market. For Honda, this is a very key product. It is going to be really their third or fourth vehicle in their portfolio and from that perspective it has to deliver and I genuinely feel that it has what it takes it all of the right boxes that need to be ticked off it's got good design it's, my guess is Honda's also got pricing power now that the Honda City and the 1.5 litre IV tech has been extensively used over a period of time and it's also genuinely efficient and ready for an application like this so my guess is Honda's pricing power does come through with a shared platform components. Other factor, of course, is Honda is also acutely aware about some of the mistakes of the past when it comes to pricing and positioning. So I do expect the Elevate to be aggressively priced. I won't be surprised if Honda prices the Elevate starting from a base of under 11 lakhs or so. I do look forward to a very, very aggressive price range in between about 11 to 16 lakhs. My favorite variant, of course, would be the top variant, which is genuinely loaded. And I would say, if you're an young buyer looking to uh, enter the SUV segment, this can be all-inclusive package that delivers all of the expectations that you have from a premium compact SUV.